Radio presents In the Shadow of the Valley by Bobby Kahn, performed by the author. My father ordered me one warm afternoon, I must have been five or six, to walk the half mile to Granny's and call her a whore. This remains my sole memory where my father knelt down and held my shoulders, speaking to me at eye level. Kneeling there, he calmly told me that the church my granny took me to was all a lie. God was dead, he died a long time ago, and he wasn't coming back. I had been going to the first church of God with his mother, granny, not only to her grandchildren, but to her own children and husband, since I was born. She wrapped me up and carted me off as soon as it was decent, and we went every Sunday morning to the holiday services and on Wednesday nights when I was old enough to go to youth group. Every once in a while, I had to go on a Sunday night when there were few kids and there was nothing to do but wait for it to be over. At the end of the Sunday evening service, though, the men would sometimes stand around whoever sat on the front pew in the middle aisle, lay their hands on that person, and pray in a babbling, overlapping way that made me think they might do something even stranger. Still, I knew that my father had things mixed up. It was Jesus who died, not God, and he did come back, and God never went away at all. We didn't spend much time on that topic once my father was sure the message was clear. His attack on the church and God didn't bother me too much. I somehow knew it was retaliation for something Granny had done or said, like daring to voice her disapproval of his booze, his pills, his fighting man ways. At five, it never occurred to me that I could refuse the task he assigned to me. I nodded a, yes, I will do that, sensing his rage would quickly be redirected toward me if I showed any emotion. Nothing he ordered us to do was ever optional, and I wouldn't have the audacity to refuse his commands for a long time to come. I understood that I did not own the word no. What does no mean? What do we accomplish when we speak it? It is a refusal. I do not accept this dubious gift. Self-protection. You will not violate my sovereignty. Denial. I am not these things that you name me. Children learn the word at a young age as they test the limits their parents set for them and the boundaries the physical world imposes upon them. As frustrating as it is to accommodate the child's no, that word is essential. No functions in a way that please don't never has, in a way that tears and cries never will. It took me many years to learn the word no. I do not remember ever saying that word to my parents in defiance. You cannot make me do this. Or in resistance. I will no longer be subjected to. In fact, I do not remember speaking much at all as a child. I may have. My mother claims I did. But I remember so much more the quietness that engulfed me, shame and fear twisting my insides. I waited for moments to pass, for the confusion to subside, for the adults around me to say, everything is okay. No one ever did. Words were weapons just another form of violence that I hid from. I hid myself deep so that on the surface, people would see quiet and good girl. I thought I could control their understanding of me, keep my inner torments a secret. It seemed like another sin to be so angry. But I did not realize how much my sense of self was controlled by all that hiding. As a child walking down that one-lane gravel road, I thought I understood the word whore. I had heard it before, growing up in a home with few attempts to censor the vulgarities of the world. I had probably already heard it screamed at my mother, who never denied any curse, but who seemed to think her motherly arms would somehow protect her face and herself from what rained down. Somehow, I knew it was a word for women, and I knew it was something to be ashamed of. It was also a word for girls, girls who had been molested or maybe wore short shorts, as I was to discover soon enough. 